give you all the glory. one more time. Thank you, Lord. One more time, Lord. I just want to encourage you today. Jesus is getting us ready. You better hear me. If you read your Bible, signs in the Bible tell us he's getting us ready. He's on his way back here. And listen to what he's saying. You better make preparation for that great day. Then here, you sent us all over the world. He said, you're going to be running on that great day. You reject me. My brothers and my sisters. Ha! My father. My heavenly father. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Create me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me, God. Lord, before I can pray for anybody, I gotta pray for myself. I need you, Jesus. This is perilous time. We have lost our love for you. And we are going about doing our own thing. Forgive me, God. Give us God. It's laid up in the evening, my church. I just want you to know. Sun is going down every day. We better make preparation. Yeah, Lord. Draw us near and pressure, Lord. <laughs> To the cross where you shed your blood. Mercy, Lord. Thank you for allowing me another chance 
to pray for your children. Good God Almighty. We see it daily. Daily we do. But God, you're always there looking beyond our fault. Saying, I meet your need. I want to tell you something this morning. It's something about the name of Jesus. Every knee going to bow. Every tongue going to confess that he is the son of God. Yeah, Lord. We ask you right now, Lord, give us our daily bread. Lord, oh, Lord, <laughs> we ask you to cover us with your blood right now. We give you the glory today. You're worthy. You're Alpha and Omega. Good God Almighty. The beginning and the end. Hey, glory. You're King of Kings. You're Lord of Lords. I worship you. Praise you. Magnify you. Glorify you. You're worthy. 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 God Almighty, we be praised. We ask you right now uh, to bless our choir. Thank you, Lord, for sending these young people. Lord, you're going to use them. I pray, Lord, that they ain't know that don't let no rock cry out for them. Use them, Lord. Use them, Lord, in your service. Draw them near every day, God. Now, Lord, now, Lord, I pray for my pastor. Yeah, Lord. Every day, every hour, every minute, every second, Pastor God is with you. Yeah, Lord. I feel like old David. David said that the Lord, the Lord is a shepherd. I don't walk for nothing. He said, though I walk, good God of mine, into the valley of the shadow of death. He said, I ain't going to fear no evil. Not going to fear no evil. You're with me, Lord. So you was with David. You're with us. Lord, bless the sick and the shut in all over the world. Jesus is getting us ready. He's getting us ready. There ain't going to be no hiding place. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh upon us. Get us ready. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Mother, for that prayer. Good morning. I'm praying for a morning meditation. How many is is glad that God got you up this morning and brought you out here. Amen. So don't let me be up here singing, no singing or using this platform and just talking to myself. Amen. 
If God brought you here, he wanted to hear your voice. Amen. It's called a worship. Amen. When it come up. Okay. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence come my help. Come on, people. He will not suffer a foot, my foot, to be moved. He that keep thee will not slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thee. So, now come on all the God together with power. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time and for what? For what? Evermore. God bless you. May God continue to bless you. All right, everybody. church today. We are often tossed and driven on a restless sea of time. Summer skies and howling limpets are the seed and bright to shine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist that rolled away, we will understand it better by and by.
union with Christ Jesus, for he has paid the price and has set me free from sin. My name is Dorea Flores, and I'm asking everyone to help me do the welcome by just smiling and having a good time and giving God all the praise and worship that is due to him. Because God been good, right? Yeah. Has he been good? Because yeah. y'all don't sound like how good he been to y'all. So let's try that again. Has God been good to you? Yeah. Amen, 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 amen. Do we have any first-time visitors in the house this morning? If so, please give us a friendly wave from your seat. Amen. 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 Welcome. Welcome. We came to praise him with our whole hearts and to give God our best. And to do that at St. John, we do that with the four W's. The first one is word. Word, word, word. The word of God is holy as he is holy. So we must study and live holy according to God's word. God's word says nothing can separate us from his love, and we must study to show his holy word. The second is worship. We are made in the image of God to try to live an imitation of life that Jesus showed us how to live by worshiping God with our whole being. Not with some, all of our whole being. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, has breath, breathing, alive. If you are that, you should be praising God all the time. I'm not going to get up here because I'm not a preacher. That's pastor's job. Third is witness. In this life, we will have trials, tribulations, storms, troubles. We have all of that. But be of good cheer because we have a God that will overcome all of it. So we must open our mouth and our heart and let everyone know that our God is a great God. And just a side note, witnessing is just telling God, uh, telling people how good God has been to you. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be an evangelist. You could just simply, you know what? God made a way, and that's it. That's all witnessing is. Fourth is work. God said to, God said to work. You work. Usher is working. Preacher is working. Social media is uh, working. Singing is working. Playing is working. Smiling is working. Being a good person is working. Okay? You work while you have the time. That's what mother be up here. Work while it is day. Because when it's night, it's too late. You're done. Okay? Be obedient. Be obedient. Be obedient. Now, with all that being said, on behalf of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our pastor, <clears throat> Dr. Reverence, Kadri J. Webb, and all the members of St. John, we would like to welcome you to enjoy our spiritual experience. We will ra raise up, scream, shout, dance, and glorify the Lord. So everybody, let's rise from your seats, take some more pictures, and let's greet our guests into our Father's house. Welcome. Amen. Thank you, Duran. Come on, everybody, rise from your seat. You're a little slowful this morning. Come on, get some pep in your steps. It's fellowship time in the temple. Tell somebody you're glad to see them today. Welcome to St. Make sure you greet our guests. Where we are a family. Welcome to St. Welcome to St. John. And us as all the seatings available. You and me. Great place, a great place for you and me. Inspired, encouraged, strengthened, uplifted. Inspired, encouraged, strengthened, uplifted. Inspired, encouraged, strengthened, uplifted. St. John is the place to be. Welcome to St. John. Welcome to St. John.
Don't make- 
John family and friends, welcome back to The Place to Be. Here we are at the second Sunday of April with this testimony, We Are Blessed. Again, we celebrate all of our first-time guests, both in the sanctuary and online, and hope you feel welcome. We are excited that you chose to make our place of worship your place of worship. We want you to know that there is room for you at St. John if you are looking for a church home. An invitation will be extended later in worship to unite with this growing ministry. You may have come as a friend, but you absolutely can leave as family. One of our values here at St. John is extravagant generosity. So it's time for our outreach offering. Please grab your $10 or as close to it as you can, put that beautiful smile on your face, and let's prepare to sow to help those in need. Ushers, please serve the people of God. Now, let's see what's up at St. John this week. When you've been transformed by meeting Jesus, you feel the urge to invite others to experience that same life change. Knowing Jesus has transformed our lives, so the goal of our worship services, from our kids' environments on up, is to help people know that same love. People are much more likely to attend a church when they've received a personal invitation from someone they trust. It can alleviate the anxiety that comes with navigating a new place and the apprehensions many have regarding church. That's why Each One Bring One is so important. Every week, all of us extend the invitation to visit St. John to at least three people. So, you know the drill. Tell a few people this week about worship and let God do the rest. Each One Bring One. Small groups were well attended last week and we're back at it this week. By a show of hands, how many people are growing by studying with your group? Listen, if you didn't raise your hand because you haven't been to a small group, we're inviting you to participate. This is our time of study where we learn the word. And the bonus is that we form great bonds with our brothers and sisters. Sometimes there's even food. So what are you waiting for? Get plugged in on Monday at 12 noon or on Wednesday at 12 noon or 7 p.m. We'll see you at a small group this week. On Sunday, April 21st, we will host our annual Family and Friends Day celebration. St. John, you know what time it is. Invite your mama, daddy, children, aunties, uncles, cousins, co-workers, friends, and their friends. You get it, Lottie Dottie and everybody. We are going to have an amazing time and we are going to fill this house. And who knows, maybe some of those family members and friends who you've prayed for will learn what we know, that St. John is the place to be. All right, we are just two weeks away from our 75th church anniversary weekend. We have two big events to celebrate St. John turning the big 7-5. The first is our church anniversary picnic on Saturday, April 27th. We'll be at Lake O'Neill beginning at 11 a.m. for a day of fellowship. There'll be food, games, and plenty of laughs and fun. The church will provide meats, hot dogs, hamburgers, and chicken. For the rest of the food, we will be potlucking it. After all, isn't that how we used to do it back in the day? So stay tuned because your flock leaders will be reaching out and getting info on who's bringing what. One quick logistics item. 
You will need to sign up so that you can access the base. A sign up link will be texted out very soon. This is a day for the entire family. Then we'll go home and get rested for old school Sunday on April 28th. We are taking it back. We told you last week to get your church clothes ready. The hymn books are coming out. The choir robes have been pressed. Wait a second, where are the church fans? If I were you, I'd be here that day on time. Then, after church in true old school fashion, we'll have dinner upstairs in the fellowship hall. Please block out time to spend a good portion of your weekend with us. You only turn 75 once, so let's get ready to celebrate. Well, that's all the happenings we have time for this week. To stay connected, you can like our Facebook page, follow us on X at St. John Oceanside, or follow us on Instagram at St. John Oceanside. You can also visit our website for more information at www.stjohnoceanside.org. Well, it's time for the word. So let's stand and join in with our choir to prepare our hearts, minds, and spirits for what God has to say to us today. Thank you again for being with us. This is the St. John Experience.
I know that you're needing something this morning from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I know that these past months have been hell. And sometimes we've got to go through hell to have a testimony. Sometimes you have to go through hell to go through the fire. So this song is not just because we want to sing it to you. It's a declaration that God is moving us from where we are to where we truly need to be. And that's going through the hell, going through the fire. Because regardless, you don't look like what you went through. You, you, you don't look like what you went through. So the choir is going to sing it. And I just need you to lift your hands, whatever you're going through. If you, if you don't feel comfortable, that's all right. That's okay. But there is something that the Lord is wanting to do in this house this morning. And it is our responsibility to begin to set the atmosphere for what the Lord is about to do. Declare that. Make me a house of prayer, regardless of what I'm going through, Lord. Regardless of what it looks like. Sing, Lord. Make me a house. Make me a house of prayer. Make me a house. Come on. Make me a house of prayer, a house of prayer. Now declare it. Here we go. Let the fire on the altar never burn out. That's you locking that in with God this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Make me a house of prayer. Come on, declare. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Let the fire of my altar never burn out. Make me a house of prayer. some of you haven't said anything yet and if you really want God to turn you into that house of prayer I want you to say it out loud say Lord make me a house say it with conviction Lord make me a house Lord make me a house of prayer some of you don't understand that you won't make it without prayer I'm a witness. If I wasn't able to converse with God, I'd be sitting in a white padded cell talking to myself. That's why every day I say to him, Lord, make me a house. 
make me a house of prayer. It's prayer time. And before I pray for this assembly of the righteous, before the word comes, since you just asked God to make you a house of prayer, you asked him something. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So I need you to begin to pray for yourself and the word that you're going to receive. Open your mouth, church, and begin to ask God. Prepare your heart. Ask him to prepare your mind. Ask him to work on your spirit. Ask him to remove every distraction. Somebody walked in a day with all kinds of distractions. As the hymn says, fear and doubt to sell you. But just a little talk with Jesus will make it right. Father, in Jesus' name, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We thank you that thou, O oh Lord, are a shield for us, the glory and the lift of our heads. We honor you today because we sense your presence in this place. We have enough sense to honor you. There is none like you. There is none beside you. You alone are God. And we bless your holy name. We pray now in Jesus' mighty name that you would focus us in this moment. You have something to say. We have hearts to hear. Spirits and souls to submit. And so have your way in us right now, O oh God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Throw your weight around until somebody is saved. Somebody is sanctified. Somebody is filled with the precious Holy Ghost. We thank you in advance and Lord I thank you for these people every week you give me precious people to talk to I thank you for the faithful ones and Lord I pray publicly today give me strength to continue to do right by them with this word it's not in my own might or my own power my own strength but it's yours and yours alone. Your strength is made perfect, even in my weakness. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Mark chapter 12, the presence of the Lord is in this place, church. I told y'all last week I'm sensitive and sensory. I, I can feel him real easily just know when he's here. I can smell him. I can feel him all down in my baby toe. I can feel it moving in the atmosphere. Anybody else feel what I feel? Old church would say he's moving from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's how you know he's God. He's so big that he can move in all of us at the same time. 
you all the way over there and he got your soul on fire and he's keeping mine hot too. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mark chapter 12. I feel that too. I really do. If you knew, sometimes I just pause because when God is moving, it ain't nothing to do or say. Some of us need this. I'm going to move to my text, but if you're comfortable, can you just go wrap your arms around somebody? Just go wrap your arm around somebody and tell them he's here. We are contact church. You might not know what I'm doing, but I do. Wrap your arm around somebody and tell them he's in the building. Hallelujah. in the building church. chapter 12 beginning with verse 41 I'm going to see what the Lord says if he hits you you just ought to go ahead and holler I'm not in the business of trying to get in the way of nobody praise and worship I'm the pastor but he's God if he hits you you got to go ahead and holler chapter 12 verse 41 the Bible says now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury many who were rich put in much then one poor widow came and threw in two mites which make a quadrant so he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance. But she out of her poverty put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. Verse 42 one poor widow came in and threw in two mites. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, young adults and choir, for 
just singing today and just ushering us into the presence of the Lord. God is up to great things in this church, and I'm glad about it. And he's thankfully, by his grace and mercy, given me some great people to do ministry alongside. Of. So I want to say thank you again for preparing us in such a tremendous way. With your prayers and your participation today, as the Spirit of the Lord is moving in this place, I want to preach from this tag. I want to talk about the widow's might. The widow's might. M-I-G-H-T. The widow's might. She put in a might, M-I-T-E, two mites, because she had might, M-I-G-H-T. The widow's might. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has been on one lately. Just a few days earlier, Jesus flips tables over in the temple in a fit of rage. His heart is incensed. His anger burns because instead of the holy house of God being a place of consecration and holy presence like we feel even now, it has become a place of some very questionable financial dealings by the scribes and the chief priests. Jesus is not happy that his house has been turned into a den of robbers and thieves. That's not what the temple is for. And so this does not go over well with Jesus. And his rebuke has agitated the leadership of the temple so much that it puts in motion, it precipitates a plan, a plot to kill the king of kings and the lord of lords. Prophetic ministry is risky business. You will say what God told you to say and folks will want to kill you. Ask any prophet who has a book who bears his name. You will communicate things that God has spoken in your ear. And folks will throw traps for you. You will do what we often say is cliche, but some people don't really mean it in their heart. You'll say what he told you to say. And in your saying it, folks will try to set you up. They are upset with Jesus for doing what I do and what many of us all endeavor to do as good Christian people, and that is simply tell the truth. The truth, that's it, mother. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help us God. They're not happy. Nonetheless, on a balmy Jerusalem day, after boldly telling a rich man that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, Jesus decides to find himself a seat opposite the treasury of the temple to people watch. He keeps his attention on the temple leaders whose behavior suggests that they have lost their sense of calling and identity. It is clear that they are unclear about who they are called to be and what they are supposed to be doing as people of God. Their conduct is corrupt. Can I just say it like I feel it? These folks ain't right. These folks are shady. These folks are not to be trusted. And these are people in what's supposed to be the safest place. 
the temple of Almighty God. Their conduct is so corrupt, quiet, that the Bible says that they devour widows' houses. As they administer these poor women's estates, as they serve as executors, they embezzle them out of their money, take advantage of them. And in working with their paperwork, as they grab those sheets of parchment, they forge on them and alter them and peel off a few dollars for themselves. The scribes are haughty, they are arrogant, they think more highly of themselves than they ought. Daily drinking the intoxicating elixir of self-promotion. And so instead of leading God's people, they parade around in long robes to show their status. It ain't about what you wear, church. Because we've all heard it said before, nothing novel about what I'm getting ready to say. You can be a dressed up mess. You can have on a robe and be rebellious. You can have on a robe and be rogue. You can have on a robe and be recalcitrant. They wear their robes to show their status. They walk around every day becoming more and more inflated. It's a wonder they're not Humpty Dumpty because they're so puffed up by the deferential greetings of people in the marketplace. They walk in the church late and they come in late because they know they got a seat. They have the best seats in the synagogue, in the church house. And instead of leading God's people in the pathway of the Lord, they spend the majority of their time partying, being socialites. Lord have mercy. He called them to be ambassadors. They are socialites. They are going to, to, going to feast. They are spending time with the rich and the famous, all the while being straight up thieves. Sticky fingers in the synagogue. They are status driven. I don't want you to miss it. Sucking up the high feeling of having people stand for them as they walk by. And what's sad is that all of this is hidden under the smoke screen of loud and long prayers. We just sang, Lord, make me a house. But they are not houses of prayer. They pray out of habit. And not because they are holy. And so they smoke screen their haughtiness. They smoke screen their rebellion against God. They smoke screen their lack of moral and ethical integrity by praying loud and praying long. They feel that if they pray loud enough and long enough, no one will notice what they really have begun to stand for. Suffice it to say that the scribes have abused their positions of spiritual authority to take advantage of people in God's house. I'm all for prayer, but you got to test the spirit by the spirit to see if the spirit is of God. This temple has robbed this woman and other widows of the ability to live and to live well. The temple, the temple, the church, the place that's supposed to be the safe place doesn't protect her but it exploits her and it is this selfish and hypocritical behavior that disgusts our Lord and casts the scribes under God's judging eye the Lord is not pleased with them and he issues a very stern declaration that they will receive greater condemnation Perhaps the Lord, and I wish every politician could hear this, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, and at this point we never thought we'd get here, they jump in sides of the aisle so you can't trust neither side of the aisle because today you're on the red side and tomorrow you're on the blue side, and then if they're really trying to snatch your vote and hide behind a smoke screen, they'll say they're an independent. But I wish everybody on the hill could that perhaps God has grown tired of the exploitation of the poor. Jesus don't like it. And if he don't like it, I know you're right, brother, neither do I. 
So as Jesus watches from his seat and people watches, the people come to put their money in. They come around for offering. They throw their money into 13 brazen chests. You've heard this text before, known as trumpets. Each trumpet was for a certain fund, and every Jew was expected to contribute to the upkeep of the house of God and the advancement of its cause. Let me roll it back. Each trumpet was for a certain fund. Sound familiar, church? And every Jew was expected, every Jew was expected to contribute to the upkeep of the house of God and the advancement of its cause. Before Christ was even born some 30 plus years earlier, Herod the king had inaugurated a movement to complete the construction of the temple. And so this was regarded as a religious duty. Let me just say, and I promise you, this is a lot better than last week. It's not as heavy, hot, and heavy as last week. Trust me when I tell you. But let me just say, because folks want to make it taboo in church, money has always been a means to an end to practically handle the affairs of life and the house of God. Look at somebody and say, we got to pay bills. Money's always been a means to an end, right? It's existed. Currency has always existed from the beginning of time as a means to an end to take care of our practical needs in exchange for it and also to not leave God out but to make sure that his household is also taken care of. Imagine the scene, if you will. I want you to get it in your mind. All walks of life are present. The rich come. It's like a church is diverse. The, the poor come. And I would venture to say, if such even existed, the so-called middle class of that day. Male, female, boys and girls, infants, newborns, children, teenagers, young adults, middle age, and those who are over the hill. Everybody, the Levites, the priests, the scribes, they come by in their extravagant regalia. And as you can guess, they got money. So they put in large offerings. I mean, if you stole money, I would suppose you'd have a little bit too. The text says it's a shame to steal it and don't keep none of it. It's a shame to steal it in the first place, but at least if you're going to steal it, keep a few dollars of it. The Bible says that the rich... They put in much. And so they go in, in their offering time, they put grandeur on display and want to simply show everyone just how much they give to the temple. They, like some of our brothers and sisters, they still have brothers and sisters, but they just got a little off in them every now and then. They simply want to show off. But in the midst of all of this giving, the clinging and the clanging of the coins and the competition for who can give the most, one poor widow comes in, throws her two coins in mothers called mites, which the Bible says make a quadrant. They're worth hardly anything, but it's all she has, for she is now poor. She ain't got nothing, church. She is grieving and she is destitute. But she comes with all that she has and drops it into one, maybe two, of those 13 trumpets. Every time I read this text, my spiritual imagination cannot help but wonder what trumpet she threw it in. What fun did she give it to? I really see her in my mind after having been there. I can imagine her in their traditional garb, dressed in the hot and humid heat of Jerusalem. It's hot over there, y'all. Coming to the temple, y'all, and taking everything she's got. Bent over with grief and age. Arthritis racking her body even in the heat. Her knees hurting. Her shoulders stiff. 
Come on here, somebody. She got arthritis in her toes. Some of the mothers said amen here. But I can see her like some of y'all waking up that morning and saying, I got to get to the house of God and slowly being the one who probably annoyed everybody she's walking up and she's slow and everybody said won't she just hurry up and throwing her coins in she's so slow that I would envision that she was the last one shuffling her feet to get over there and when she gets over there everybody had already thrown theirs in so I'd imagine her offering was real loud click clink And everybody, those who are showing off, are upset because she has taken their shine. She took her time and took their shine. And Jesus, seeing this, calls his disciples and says, Hey, y'all, come on over here. And tells them that this poor woman put in more than all who had given an offering that day. Why? Because they gave out of their excess, their leftovers, their overflow, their abundance, but she gave when she didn't have it from a place of lack. She didn't give a big treasure, give it out of a big treasure chest, but she gave what the Lord considered treasure. She gave out of her poverty. I want you to understand it here because I'm coming on down your row here. Imagine the considerable strain that this woman is under. We are not sure how she is handling the death of her husband. She probably hasn't left the house much, if at all, if she even has left once uh, since her husband has died to go home and rest in the bosom of Jesus. I want you to see her room, see her tear-stained pillow, soaked with tears of grief. I want you to look into her face when everybody else is looking past her stooped uh, and lowly figure and see the bags uh, and the dark circles under her eyes uh, from not being able to sleep at night. I want you to put yourself in her shoes uh, and feel her internal heartbreak and anguish uh, from adjusting to try, trying to adjust uh, to laying all by herself in the cold of the night. And I want you to imagine her anxiety as the bills begin to pile up. And then I want you to see her steely resolve as this widow still gets up, goes to church, and gives God everything she's got. I'm moving to the points. I only got two today. Jesus says she gave more then everyone here, and I thought about that in the words, the widow's might, M-I-G-H-T, hit my spirit. Jesus elevates her gift. He sees her gift as significant. He sees her gift as the definition of might, strong. Sisters and brothers, I'm preaching this because we have been taught that we have to have a certain amount to give a significant gift. We've been taught that. And so instead of being faithful and subsequently fruitful, there are those who are trying to gain a harvest without sowing a seed, which is impractical and impossible. Society has bamboozled some of the saints into believing in a seedless harvest when no such thing exists. Seed is the substance of harvest. Seed is, can I teach y'all, the foundation of harvest. Seed is what God will water. Throw a little spirit on it, throw a little Jesus on it, and grow it into something far larger than the seed, far larger than you ever could imagine. Some of us know about seed, church. And in order to get a harvest, you got to sow your seed. I'm preaching this because... Modern day scribes exist. Well, I'm going to deal with it. They 
They exist, y'all. Modern day scribes exist. And many of you, some of you, I should say, not many of you, some of you will give your money to them on TV. Modern day scribes. Before you will sow into the house, that's a blessing to you every single week. Some of you are buying, that's it, miracle spring water. They ain't say nothing about no water. I'm sanctified. I believe in oil. Okay? And you can go to the market and get you some extra virgin olive oil for $10, $15. Bring it in here and tell the mothers and the intercessors to lay their hands on it, pray on it. It's just a symbol. Come on here, somebody. And we got a whole lot better than sending Peter Pop off all your money. You notice he come on in the middle of the night when you have sleep and ain't got good sense. He trying to get you in your grogginess. Modern day scribes exist, church. And I preach this because the widow's might, M I G H T, is in sowing the widow's mites, M I T E S. The widow's might, M I G H T, is in sowing the widow's mites, M I T E S. In other words, her strength is in the sowing of her seed. Tell somebody it takes strength to sow. Especially when you don't have a lot of seed. I ain't going to, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. it. It ain't much, but she maximized her gift. That's it, mother. Such as I have, Lord. I'm too early for this. I'm trying to walk. Such as I have, I give it unto thee, Lord. She maximized it. She gives the best of what she got. Ain't there something I can give you? In exchange for everything you give to me. Read my mind, you make me feel just fine. When I think my peace of mind is out of reach. The scales are sometimes unbalanced. And you bear the weight of all that has to be. I hope you see that you can depend on me. And I owe you that because you calm the stormy sea. You love so strong and so unselfishly. And I tell you now that I made a vow. I'm giving you the best that I got, Jesus. Yes, I tell you now that I made a vow. I'm giving you the best that I've got, Jesus. Hey, y'all know about Anita. That's my remix. That's my remix right there. Y'all, <laughs> I got to come to choir practice. See what I, y'all done mess me up. I got to come to choir practice on Thursday, 6 o'clock. And y'all don't leave me by myself. If I got to come, you got to come too. He ain't no respect the person. That's my remix. Now, let me say this and I'm moving. The might is in pleasing God. M-I-G-H-T is in pleasing God by giving him the best that we've got. It's not some external look or display. It's an internal posture. I'm going to get there. The might, M-I-G-H-T, is his sermonic idea in giving, not in taking. The Bible teaches us it is more blessed, thank you, to give, Lord have mercy, than to receive. This widow has might, M-I-G-H-T, because she gave her might, M-I-T-E-S. Verse 44, I got two things to tell you today, and we're going on home. Verse 44, they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had, her whole livelihood. Here's the first thing I want to tell you, only got two, might, M-I-G-H-T, strength, is found in the scope of her giving. Let church say scope. All right. Here's the scope. She gave everything. It was sacrificial. Everybody say sacrificial. And this makes absolutely no sense, does it? Those who don't have faith see this as absolute madness and foolishness. Why in the world are you giving all your money to this temple lady? I'm sure that's what somebody was thinking. 
Before Jesus explained it, perhaps even a disciple, if he witnessed it, thought himself the same thing. She crazy. Some of you have had people ask you, come on here, somebody. I know what generations I got in here. Some of you got some husbands that ain't saved. And you coming in here being faithful, praying for your husband every week, and you doing your part every single week. And he's saying, why are you giving all your money? That church. Some of you got some friends who are saying, why are you faithful to that church? Why are you continuing to sell? Hey, you want a fixed income now. Some of your kids have said, mama, you want a fixed income. You only get social security. You only get this much every single month. And your folks are looking at you saying, what in the world is wrong with you? Can I tell you something? The natural man, including your family and mine too, understand if not the things of the spirit, what would you have said to her? Because it's easy to act like we the good person, but come on, sometimes you haven't always been the good voice in somebody's ear. What would you have said to her if you watched her give the last two coins of her earthly worth, wealth, if you knew it was all she had? Would you have encouraged it? Or would you have discouraged it? She gave everything. Now, Jesus ain't prone to exaggeration. Jesus ain't exaggerating. So everything in the text means she gave everything. It is equivalent, and I want you to, to embody this. I want you to embody this. What she did is equivalent to every single one of us taking every dime and asset we have Okay, I'm not talking about your house. I'm talking about every liquid asset, 401s, retirement accounts, investments, and everything in your bank account. And throwing it in the offering basket. Now wipe your brow. Whew. Look, y'all got nervous. They got nervous, didn't they, mothers? Woo, y'all got nervous. Wipe, wipe your brow. I know some of y'all started sweating. Wipe your brow, because we ain't asking for everything. Somebody will say, now y'all should have said, thank you, Lord. We just talked about tithing last week, and the tithe is 10%, and 10% ain't everything, right? All right, so he's not asking you for everything, but what we're talking about this week is the spirit of giving. Not just the act, right? Not just the act of obedience, but the spirit in which I obey God. And where I want to push us is that mature giving is sacrificial in scope and not just habitual. Now, this way I can push our current givers. Some of you are tithers. And Lord knows we're grateful for you. But are you sacrificing or are you just giving the 10%? Because there are those who tithe, right, who tithe and have got a scribe spirit on them. And so because I tithe, I stick my chest out and everything else is his problem and the church's problem. But let's talk about the spirit of giving. The call is to be sacrificial. And just because it's habitual doesn't mean it's sacrificial. And if it ain't sacrificial, it ain't given in the right spirit. This challenges all of us because it means I got to give some more money too. You ought to feel it. She's strong because of that. Now here's the tension. It takes strength to sacrifice anything, let alone everything. I mean, I'm talking about mental strength to get your mind past your temporal needs, which you can't get away from. We ain't so heavenly minded that we ain't no earthly good. The mortgage still got to be paid. The rent is still due. You still got to eat for the next two weeks until your check come through. So it takes mental strength to get your mind past that into a place of seed. And it takes strength in terms of one's faith to believe that God is going to take care of you. Watch this now. Our gifts are a reflection of our hearts. It shows how much we are willing to trust God for. 
I know it's going to get quiet in there. Thank you, Ms. Burton. It shows how much faith I've got. It's one of the expressions of faith. It demonstrates that I understand that my stuff is God's. It shows how tied we are, how tightly tied we are to material things. It shows us where our real treasure is, for where our treasure is, there my heart is also. Let me talk to the saints. I'm just talking today. You say you love this church. That's what you say. But your treasure is elsewhere. Some of you say this church has saved your life. But your treasure is elsewhere. And I want to say it again. God is not asking you for everything that this woman gave. She gave everything. I'll tie it to last week. He asked you for something. I was in a small group this week, and this is why I like small groups. There's a point of clarification that came up. We had a great session. We were broken off into groups. Our groups getting big, so we had to break up into small groups and all that. And so we were in our small groups. It was wonderful. Had a great time. You should come, for real. It was wonderful. Had a great time. We're sitting there, and one of the questions that came up, when we came back together, we began to review. So we went over these questions together, and then we kind of did this round robin, and we went over the, all the uh, information that we had gathered among our groups. Like five, it was five groups. It was a whole bunch of us. That's a good thing. Me, small groups are expanding. And so one of the things that came up consistently was, when they were asked, why are you not giving or why are you not tithing, why are you not doing what God's asked you to do, was, well, we have some other things that are going on. This was a consistent sentiment across a couple of groups. And it gave me an opportunity to teach in a way that I can't always do in the pulpit, to say, listen, I want to make sure you didn't miss this in the sermon, right? It's not about your circumstance, right? Your circumstance is not an excuse to not give. God is asking, can he get on that same priority list with all them other things, and can he have a high place on it? That is sacrifice. You, you, you track in church? All right. So she has might, M-I-G-H-T, because of the scope of her giving. Her mites, M-I-T-E-S, are sacrificial. All right. It's so sacrificial that Jesus considers that which society would easily discredit to be substantial. Can I tell you something? There are people in here who don't give the largest amounts, but who are some of my favorite givers. Because I know that every time they write anything on that envelope, it is a major sacrifice. My little bit won't make a difference. That's a mindset that many are prone to. But let me push us beyond a quantitative understanding of this and counting our gifts numerically to a qualitative perspective whereby we see giving, about, we see giving as being about the quality of the gift. It ain't always how much you give. And what she gave was more than a tithe. It was 100%. It's about the quality of it. Right. And I want to contend that the quality of the gift is based on how sacrificial it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mothers. I'm a ride with my goons. I'm going to stay up here on these first couple rows. Y'all pray me on up through here. It's going to be all right for me. Am I doing all right? I'm in the book. Right. OK, I, I didn't leave it. Right. Got to be accountable. I'm in the book. Right. I'm contending that the quality of your gift is based on. Some of you giving $50 over and over again. But that's not sacrificial for you. And you're wondering why God won't bless it. Because it's not quality. And I've been telling you over and over again. That you're rebellious. Not against Take Bible says. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on, turn the corner up. The tithe is holy, not unto the pastor, but unto the Lord. Okay, what does holy mean? 
consecrated, set apart for holy use. The tithe is holy, not set apart to the pastor, but unto the Lord. I want to break that in the church because everybody thinks that we just coming in and that the tithe is no. Let me tell you, it costs too much to keep the lights on and everything else for the tithe to be dropped in the priest's lap. The priests make sacrifices. You have scribes out there, but every priest that's good and that's worth his salt, that loves God, is giving God a sacrificial quality of ministry as a gift. And there are things that we deserve and earn and still don't have. The tithe is holy. Let me speak to that in here. Unto the Lord. And we look better than the money we got. Because we ain't got as much as you think. And so he'll do what they say. I like how the mother said, he'll shine you right on up. And have you looking not like what you've been through, but like the favor of God is resting on your life. He's measuring the gift. God is measuring the gift. Perhaps not by how much you give, but how much you keep. I once read that there are three kinds of givers, the, the flint, the sponge, and the honeycomb. To get anything out of a flint, you must hammer it. You got to keep banging on it. And then you only get chips and sparks. All right? All right? So for some of you, God has to allow life to bang on you to get anything out of you. Then you have a sponge. To get water out of a sponge, you must squeeze it. And so the more you use pressure, the more you'll get. And so some of you are saying, why can't I get any relief? Because you're a sponge. And your faith has not developed to a place where God can release the squeeze of life on you to get anything out of you. But then there are a few who have lived long enough and then went through their flint phase and went through their sponge phase. And said, he's sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. So I may as well, since I made his image, go ahead and be a honeycomb too. The honeycomb just overflows with its own sweetness. The honeycomb just allows its honey to overflow. Which kind of giver are you? Because the idea is to become a honeycomb giver where giving overflows. It just comes out of your pores. There's no need that's not supplied. Everything you always got in the church house is in the house. There's no expense that cannot be paid. You know we've done it before. Right? Now we have an issue here, and then I'm going to tell you the second thing. Here's, a, here's an issue here, because I don't want to be uh, socially ignorant or turn my eye to this. Why is she poor in the first place? Now, election season coming up, okay? And I want you to vote your conscience. And your conscience should be molded by the word of God. And Jesus talks about the poor. He even talks about not just being numerically poor. He talks about being poor in spirit. He says, blessed are the poor. Jesus talks about those who are in a place where they are poor. I don't want us to miss the social issue at work here in the text and the social issue at work in today's society. Jesus rebukes that. And we ought to rebuke that as well. Here's how you rebuke it. I'm going to throw a plug in for social action. Rebuke it at the ballot box. Because let me tell you something. If you don't, the rich going to get richer. And the poor are going to get poorer. I know you're right, mother. <laughs> but guess what? I'm rich in spirit. In Jesus, I know you're right, mother. The rich going to get richer. <laughs> she said she... <laughs> <laughs> Woo. There's only one saint. One who is a casualty of capitalism. 
One who's a casualty of capitalism, because it's the same thing we see today. Ain't nothing brand new under. Ain't nothing new under sun. One who's a casualty of capitalism still makes a sacrifice, because the priority of God didn't change. Yeah. All right. I heard somebody say something very empowering last week because it just let me know that everybody ain't looking for trouble. Yeah. One of our brothers said last week, "Look." Whatever they do with it, that's on them. He dealt with the scribes. God got to deal with it. And that's what God does in this text. He dealt with the scribes. He said, great up what? Condemnation is coming on them. Ain't that what he said? All right. We try to deal with people who ain't our assignment. And can I tell you something? Tracing every action of a scribe who's already corrupt. You know he corrupt. So what you trying to trace? He corrupt. You already know. Ain't nothing to trace because since he corrupt, he going to make it untraceable. We try to deal with folks who ain't our assignment. And this does not pardon it. No. It's just that God can take care of people. I'm a witness. Far better than you and I can. Second thing, and I'm going on home. Second thing. Second thing. I know you're right, mother. And I ain't got no verse for this. But second thing, and I'm done. Might, M-I-G-H-T, strength is found in the source of her giving. I'm going to give you Bible in a second because I got more than one for this. Might is found in the source of her giving. Now, this isn't as obvious in the text, but I can give you Bible for it. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. I can give you Bible for it. The silver is mine. That's what the Bible says in Haggai. And the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. I can give you Bible, every beast of the field is mine. And what we often like to quote, the cattle on a thousand hills, they are mine. I can give you Bible, church. He says, everything under heaven is mine. I can give you Bible, church. He says, Will a man rob God? And you can't rob somebody of something that ain't theirs in the first place. I can give you Bible about the source, church, uh, that every good and perfect gift, uh, it comes uh, from above. Uh, I'm trying to tell somebody uh, that I'd like to think uh, that her considering the source uh, and understanding uh, that God gave her everything, uh, that it impacted her giving uh, and gave her the strength uh, to shuffle on in the church with the vicissitudes of life on her uh, and say, God, I got to give you something. Uh, and I believe that as she made her way to the trumpets, uh, Somehow and some way, uh, something on the inside of her uh, began to talk to her, uh, the spirit of the living God, uh, and began to tell her, uh, you ain't got to worry about a thing uh, because there's more uh, where that came from uh, and that it be made a way before uh, that God is able uh, to do it again. Uh, so if you feel like having church uh, and I didn't worry your patience too much today, uh, would you look at somebody uh, and tell them there's more uh, where that came from? Uh, tell them don't worry about it. Uh, he's able uh, to supply church uh, every one uh, of your needs uh, according uh, to his riches uh, in glory. Uh, this woman, uh, she found strength uh, in her source. Uh, come on, look at somebody uh, and tell them his strength is made perfect uh, in my weakness. Uh, would you do me a favor? Uh, look at somebody uh, and tell them when I ain't got it. Uh, that's when his strength shows up, uh, when I lack faith to do it, uh, but push myself. Uh, that's when his strength shows up. Uh, and I don't know uh, about you this morning, uh, but I thank God uh, for strength uh, because I found might uh, in his strength. Uh, it's not my own strength, uh, but it's in him uh, that I live. Uh, it's in him uh, that I move, uh, and it's in him uh, 
that I had my being. Uh, and so I'm going to say it again. Uh, I found might uh, in his strength. Uh, would you look at somebody uh, and make a muscle uh, and say, I found might uh, in the strength of God. Uh, look at somebody on the other side. Uh, come on, mothers. Uh, you got some muscle too. Uh, your muscle prayed me over. Uh, but look at somebody uh, and tell them I got might. Uh, in his strength uh, and then we go ahead uh, and look at God uh, and testify to him uh, say you are the source uh, of my strength uh, and you are uh, the strength uh, of my life uh, and do I have anybody here uh, who ain't offended by the little money uh, who can say I lift uh, my hands in total praise unto you. I'm through church, but perhaps this widow considered the source. Perhaps she thought about his keeping power. Perhaps she thought about how she should have been dead and sleeping in a grave, but the Lord somehow kept her. Perhaps she thought about the fact that he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's light in the darkness. Perhaps her mind got the walking down memory lane. And even though she's old, she heard somebody say, I once was young, but now I'm old. And she got strength and said, I never. She couldn't dance, but she could shuffle. Said, I never seen the righteous uh, forsaken uh, no his seed uh, begging bread uh, and when she got to the altar she finally got there uh, and said to herself uh, I'm yours Lord uh, everything I've got uh, everything I am uh, and everything I'm not uh, and she started throwing money uh, and said I'm yours Lord uh, won't you try me now uh, and see uh, and see if I uh, can't be uh, completely yours. Uh, now it's getting ready to be offering time, uh, but I want you to think uh, that maybe uh, you can recall uh, that he's been a burden bearer. Uh, maybe uh, you'll be able to recall uh, that he's been a bridge uh, over troubled waters. Uh, maybe uh, you'll be able to recall, uh, I ain't got no help in here, uh, that he's a heart fixer. Uh, and a mind regulator and maybe when you come you'll be able to testify that life has been rough and I ain't old but I'm so torn down I'm shuffling like it cause life has beat me but all to Jesus all to Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give and I will ever love and trust him in his presence. I shouldn't even be doing it today. Daily live. I surrender. I'm done. I'm through church. I'm through. All I want to tell you is this. I don't want you to get emotional. I don't want you to get hyped. I don't want him to hype you. I don't. I don't. I want you to understand this widow's might. Her might, M-I-G-H-T, her strength wasn't giving her might, M-I-T-E-S. She's a mighty woman. She's a mighty woman. Just like some of the people in here who are literally mighty women. You say, Pastor, I've been a widow a long time. I got to take care of this house. Come on here, y'all. I got to pay somebody because tell them I'm too old and I dare go on show ain't cut no grass. Come on here, somebody. And tell, look, and they going up, ain't they? Inflation, they going up, right? There's some, some strong women here. But then there are those who God is compelling to be strong. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. You can have might if you lean into his might. And guess what? He is your source. I'm 
I'm sorry I have to preach this. Sorry, but not sorry because I can't not tell you the truth. And in particular, I'm talking to the generations that are even after me. Can you believe that now? Who are two after me now, right? I don't know the names. I was Z and Alpha. I really be confused. What's the next generation, y'all? Alpha. And what is it Z? Is it Generation Z? Is it Gen Z? All right. So it's generations after us, but society has not taught us to be faithful in giving to anything. So it ain't just church. It has taught us to be selfish. Now, the way I grew up, and I got spoke with gold me, some of the Xers, come on here, some Zennials, right between X Millennials and Millennials, right? I got some folks go with me, and I know the boomers and the folks before them will go with this. Let me tell you something. The way I grew up, all we could do was give to one another. Let me tell y'all something. And I'm serious, and when I think about it, I will get to crying and shouting up here. I know what it's the hot dogs and baked beans, and we split that pot. My aunt got four kids. My mama got three. Come on here, somebody. We ain't have no individual. All this stuff now, you go to market, they got these individual bowls and stuff. We had that mess when I was growing up. We had that mess, y'all. Come on. We went and got them welfare, that welfare cheese, government cheese. That was good. I'm trying to tell you. And we'll stretch it out and make grilled cheese. I'm trying to tell you. Cheese sandwiches with mayonnaise. You, right, if you was doing good there, we could have a few extra dollars. You had a couple slices of tomato put on there. In the summertime, summer, winter, spring, and fall, it ain't matter. You had to eat what you had. And this generation that comes up behind, it's not a criticism. It's really me being a prophet against society has taught us to not share. You hold on to your stuff as every man for himself. And they sing it I N D E P E N D E E N whatever. I can smell. I can spell and smell. You know what I'm trying to say. I think that is contrary to the plan of God. Who designed us to live in community and to share what we have. And I don't want anybody to walk away from this space not understanding what I'm saying. God ain't even asking you for everything. This church ain't. But you got to get a heart to give. I'm talking to some older folks. I ain't talking to none of y'all, but I'm talking to some older folks because I got one or two rebellious ones in here. You determined to do it your way. And God is asking you, if I died for you, you can't give me nothing? Shame on you. Shame on me if I ever think God owe me something. What uh, Vicky Wine said, if the Lord never do anything else for me, he's already done enough. Right? Was that Beverly Crawford? I've got the wrong artist. Right? That's, that's, that's Evangelist Beverly. Lord. Let me give a song away. God wants us to be sacrificial. That looks different for each person, but here's what I can tell you about sacrifice. You feel it. Can I tell you something? A dollar is not a sacrifice for some of you. Not when you're wearing fresh J's. A dollar is not a sacrifice for you when you know you got good hair on your head. And I think it looks beautiful. I'm glad you got it. Mother, just wink at your sister and say, This is a good wig. Say, It's a good wig. Say, I ain't got no money to buy a new one, so I went on and bought me a good one. Right? God is calling us to sacrifice. I meant it when I said it last week. Ain't no way in the world I should come up here wearing more than what I put in church. Right? Ain't no way I should be driving more than I put in church. Ain't no way I should be living larger than what I put in church. If my church can't do certain things because I'm not doing my part, God is saying, hey, I want you to be strong like this widow. It requires that you examine the scope. I want everybody today to examine the scope of your giving. Am I giving a sacrifice? Or am I giving God a tip? Think about the source. Because the source will empower you to be sacrificial. 
on our choir to sing a line. They're getting ready to pronounce a blessing on you. But let me say this. You can't be blessed if you don't sow seed into the ground because the harvest is the blessing. I want you to think about that today. What is God asking you to do? And even as they begin to share this song, I want you to think about how good God has been to you. We, we overstated. And I know some of y'all tired today. I'm tired too. Only about four hours. I'm tired too. But God's been good to you. We're too casual about that. I'm not going to let us slide back into that. God's been good to you. I want you to bow your head. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to take a moment. As our choir begins to sing that to pray that you can receive the blessing. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you. to slide your hands up. You got to open them to receive it. Sing quiet. Sing it again for me. Make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. I want everyone standing all over the church. That means it is so. Come on, say, I receive it, I receive it. Come on, join the choir, everybody. Amen. Go ahead and be honest. Say, Lord, it's hard, but it's so. Oh, it's hard to do, Lord. quickly and you say well he's gonna pray over the offering we just pray lord make me a house of prayer i pray all the time and while the anointing is moving in this moment i want to tap into it because he really is working on hearts here let me say this there are people who took a step of faith this week and they tithed for the first time i ain't that's going that way if you did it for the first time this week i want you to come because i want to pray for you come on don't be ashamed I want to pray for you. I'm getting ready to bless you. So if you've done it for the first time this week, I want you to come. I want you to come for the first time. If you were a recovering tither, you were used to tithing, you got off the bandwagon, I want you to come. I just want to pray for you this week. I want to pray for you. I know at least one in here, but if you don't want to come, I'm not going to pray for you. Not in public, at least. There are people who literally made the step. If that's you, come on. We don't have a lot of time. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're not going to come? All right. Here's my second thing I want to do. I want to pray for your spirits. Now, I pray that the Lord move you if you've already tired, because I saw one of them come through this week on the cash app. I get notifications about it. Finance gives me a report. And I said, look at God working on the hearts of men. That's why I want to pray for you, because God is working on the hearts and the minds of men and women, boys and girls in this space. 
And if you trust him, he's going to do great things. He don't want all your stuff. He just wants his portion. So I want to pray for you right now that God will continue to work on your heart and that you will hear the word of the Lord and heed the word of the Lord. So bow your head real quick. Father, in Jesus' name, work according to your will. Lord, I have planted the seed. Some will be watered. Some will slip away. But you will provide the increase. And so, God, by me sharing what you've given me to share, I, O oh Lord, pray that you would make this word come to life in your people. We want to be right. And, Lord, it's hard. We are repenting because we're so quick to declare the blessing of the Lord on our lives. Many of us will give you credit, but we won't give you cash. Some of us won't even give you credit, but many give you credit, but won't give your house a little bit of cash. And so, Lord, we've sought to do this your way, to not be over the top or offensive, to keep it as trite as possible. And now I lean on your spirit. I ask now for my brothers and sisters who are genuinely living in tension, that you would remind them that you are the source of their strength. You are the strength of their life. And that you, God, will give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I want to thank you for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. As you remain standing, the door of this church is open. You're here today. You don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the part of your sins. Won't you do me a favor? Slide into one of these aisles. Come, give me your hand. Give God your heart. You say, Pastor, wait a minute. I ain't going to walk yet. I ain't going to walk yet because I don't know what you're talking about. How do I ask him into my life? You can simply repeat after me. Here's how you do that. You say, well, I don't know what to say. I'll tell you what to say. Say, God, I come in Jesus' name. I confess that I'm a sinner. I ask you now, come into my heart. Save me. Convert me. Make me new. And I thank you that right now I am changed and I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if it's your very first time ever praying a prayer like that and you're in this house, would you do me a favor and you don't have to join me, just come make contact with my hand. We are contact church. I make contact with the saints because the anointing is stirred through making that kind of contact. If it's your very first time ever praying a prayer like that, slide into one of these aisles. If it's your very first time praying a prayer like that and you're online, do me a favor. Just drop a comment. Save. Save. We want to resource you with information about the decision for Christ you made. We want to rejoice with you that you received the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords into your heart. Then my second appeal is this. You know Jesus. You know him. You know his name. He know your name. He knows everything about you. You know quite a bit about him, but you need to grow closer. You need a place where you can grow on the things of God, and quite frankly, you need a community. St. John would love to have you. My brother, my sister, if that's you on this Lord's Day, and you're looking for a church home, all are welcome here. This is the house of God. It's a hospital for a bunch of broken people. We're all at different stages in our recovery. Amen. Some been in ICU. Some are on the regular ward, some are in emergency sometimes, and then some of us, we get out of the hospital bed and we start working at the door, and then we land back in the bed. It's a cycle, but you're in a hospital, so nobody here is perfect, and we're not looking for you to be perfect, but here's what I can tell you that we are. We ain't the scribes. And we're real. We're real. And we're working out our soul's salvation with fear and trembling. You, we get a real word here. We do the best we can to give you a real word. And no, we don't talk about this all the time. We just talk about it for a week or two, all right? And family and friends day, we ain't going to talk about this to your family and friends. You get some relief off it. But this is a place where you can grow in the things of God. And so we'd love to have you be a part of our family. If you're online and you want to connect, just drop a comment, connect. But if you're in this house and you want to connect, I'll come get you today. Just raise your hand and say, Pastor, I'm like that woman. Life has beat me. I'm shuffling. I can't even walk. I'll come get you, and I'll carry you through because I got enough faith to bring you here. Would you look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? Wait for the answer. Wait for the answer. Wait for the answer. If they're not saved, say, Jesus will receive you. Jesus will receive you. All right, look at that same person. Say, I'm glad you're saved. Say, now where you go to church? Say, we don't pressure you here. 
tell them, but if you'd like to, I will walk with you to make you a part of St. John family. If they want to walk with you, tell them, come on. Yeah. If you sing and you're glad about it, come on, clap your hands. Now lift your voice without quiet. Amen. the Lord would bless you, that the Lord would keep you, that he make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. I say it every week, but even in this moment, I hope you receive the words of that blessing. That's a blessing, church. Look at somebody as we prepare to give and tell them, I'm praying that for you. Tell them, I really pray that for you. Tell them, I want the best for you. Tell them, I know so much about God that you went and don't mess me up. Tell them, it's God... It's God. Be, it's enough God for us to go around. Enough God for us to go around. He can bless you and me at the same time. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Yeah, clap your hands for Jesus. Now, you don't y'all patty cake. I got put. You supposed to clap like you love Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all say, look, Pastor, I'm tired today now. Clap like you love him. He's a mighty God, ain't he? Where I come from, we used to clap all hard. Hands be callous from clapping. We be clapping and a stopping. You go home, your hands red. You could be black as coal and your hands red when you get up out there, both sides up. Because we be clapping till Jesus. We be trying to get Jesus come back clapping, calling on heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for our music ministry. They the ones who spoke that blessing over you. Lord have mercy. Y'all sing. Look, look, you see some of these choir members, they just as happy. They said, thank God they singing. <laughs> look, they say, thank God, it's your turn. Hallelujah to Jesus. Listen, get your gifts in your hand. I know the hour's grown late. Get your gift in your hand. Want to make sure that we saw into the household of faith today. Listen, such as I have, I give it unto thee. Amen. I will hope that the word of the Lord is landing on you and that you're making steps toward being in the will of God. Now, last week we talked about the tithe, the practical expectation. This week we talked more about the spirit of giving and how to have the right spirit of giving. All right, so God asked us for what a tithe, 10%. He asked that we bring that into his household. I want to thank those who have taken the faith step. Let me say this, because I like the way it was said, and I didn't have to say it last week. It's really all or nothing. You ain't in compliance if you ain't at 10, but here's what I would do if I were you. Start taking steps toward compliance, right? So don't stay at just totally non-compliant. Take one step, two step, three step, four. You might be shuffling. 4.2, 4.31, right? Till you get to 10, amen, amen. But don't let that be an excuse as to not getting in compliance. I think about it this way. If you have a violation and you are not in compliance, typically if there are actions being made to correct it, while you will still get a fine if it ain't corrected by a certain date, they'll be a little more gracious to you, right? You still got to hurry up and get it done, so you ain't got forever because eventually they'll close the window on you, but they might get extra 30 days, extra 60 days, 90 days to get it. We cannot get lax in making the steps. So a lot of people have taken that kindness and that as a crutch. I understand some of you are making steps. One faith step is better than none at all, and I want to acknowledge you for that, but you want to get to the place where you're in compliance. Does that make sense? Amen. So 10 is what he asked for. Amen. So if you say, I'm not at 10 today, well, at least I'm stepping higher than what I am, was rather. All right. Okay. I don't want you to be stepping in high cotton looking good and giving bad. All right. Because some of y'all stepping in real high cotton. Y'all look good saints. So I want you to give as unto the Lord on this day and have the right spirit of giving. The scope of giving is what? It's sacra. All right. Every gift we give to the house of God, we got to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And we can do that when we know the source. All right. Just get your sermon again. All right. 
Y'all with me? Oh, Lord, y'all got to come to small group this week. I might not have did a good job. It happens. You can't get on base every day. But I'm going to go ahead and eat. Y'all want me to preach again? Open your Bible. The scope is what? Oh, they said sacrificial. They said, oh, no, you got to let me out of here. And how, and how do you make sacrifice? Because he's the what? There you go. Okay, some of y'all got to come to small group, amen. All right, you didn't get paid this week or didn't have any income, you give an offering, but your offering, because we got lax on the offering. Let me talk to some of our committed givers, right? You've heard me say it, right? You've heard me say it. So if there's a need, then we do a little more. And I'm not talking to Cesar. I'm talking about those who really can do a little better, all right? Okay, and even some of the Caesar saints may say, I'm going to increase it. But if you hear the leader tell you that more is required, do more, all right? Because it means we're trying to get somewhere based on what you can afford to sacrifice. Does that make sense? Y'all want me to call a line? Let me get a line. I need a $1,000 line. Mothers, the mothers looked at me and said, now, Pastor, I was rocking with you the whole time. Why you had to do that? You see their faces? They look like, good God, I'm like, nah. All right? And then capital campaign gives, yes, we have our trumpets, our various funds, okay, that we want to take care of the household of faith. Amen. All right, and y'all, please do right by this. Listen, the bank that we've got this loan from is a nuisance. They are a mess. I mean, I'm serious. That woman just, she just constantly asking for paper, 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 paper. Lord, as soon as we get out of it, we're going to have to get another one. We're going to have to refinance that. The rates are too high now, but literally, it's just too much. We can afford to pay the loan. It ain't no problem paying the loan, but the woman just worried. Send me this, send me that, miss. We got the loan. You get the bank statements every year. What is the problem? So y'all, please make it a little easier for us upstairs. Amen. All right. Amen. All right, lift your gifts. You can give in an envelope. If you need an envelope, our ushers have already come among you. Uh, if you can also give all the ways on the screen. All right. We'll be completing that. They say we're going to complete that conversion soon, but until then, give it however you can give it. Amen. Don't delay. Just give it however you can give it. Is that all right? All right. Let's pray real quick, and then our choir going to sing us on home. All right? Not that home, but home. <laughs> you shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't nobody going no prematurely. Can't no sickness, no disease come near your tent dwelling. Y'all laughing, but I mean it in Jesus' name. Father, thank you now for giving us a gift. We appreciate you for allowing us to have something to sow into your house. You have been good and gracious to us, and we thank you for it now. Now, Lord, I preach the word, and I pray that you will continue to do what you're doing. Let your spirit work on the hearts of men. Lord, we declare that this house is a house of prosperity. We have what we need. There is no lack because you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. In the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Now, repeat after me. This is my seed. I'm sowing it in good ground, and I expect the harvest. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Put a smile on your face. Let me see all y'all teeth. All right, give us unto the Lord. Give us unto the Lord. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you. You help me, Jesus, so I can lift my hands. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you. In the corners of my mind, I just can't seem to find the reason to believe that I can break free. Cause you see, I have been down for so long. Feel like all hope is gone, but as I lift my hands, I understand. I need to praise Him through all circumstances. Take shackles off my feet so I can stand. I just wanna praise I just wanna praise I just wanna praise I just wanna praise You. change how I can lift my hands. I lift my hands. I just wanna praise You. I just wanna praise You. Everything that could go wrong or went wrong at one time. So much pressure fell on me. I thought I was gonna lose my mind. But I know you wanna see if I could hold on to this trial. But I need you to lift this love, cause I can't take it no more. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. So I can dance. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna 
praise you. I just want to praise you. Come on, y'all. Give it up for our choir. Sing your song. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. You broke the chains that I can't lift the hands. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Come on, everybody. Stand up. We're going home. Haven't they done a wonderful job today? Listen, do me a favor. Next Sunday is Family and Friends Day. Everybody's in church. Where's everybody today? I feel like we're missing a few people, quite a few, right? So make sure if you haven't seen a brother or sister that you call that brother or sister, let them know that you've missed them this week, that you want to see them in church. Make sure you invite your family and your friends to be in church with us next week. Then for our church anniversary picnic, we're going to be sending out a link for you to register for that picnic, all right? So you'll get that link. It's very basic. They said they need that information, uh, but we're going to do the best we can, all right? with that and they'll figure out how to get it coordinated um we're gonna do the best we can and then old school sunday i'm trying to tell y'all y'all better get ready for that april 28th i'm ready all right i'm telling you old school i'm talking testifying devotion i'm talking about choir robes they put the choir robes in uh this week all right okay so we we going all the way all right so get your big hat where nobody can't see behind it and if they want to see, they got to stand up while I'm preaching and egg on the preacher. <laughs> and don't make no apology for it. You got to wear stockings. Now listen, listen. Now I know the lady's going to be looking at me crazy. It's old school, so stockings. Dad, bring back the stockings. No, I'm serious. We want old school all the way. So you got to put your stockings on that day. Well, mothers, y'all the ones who used to complain when they had one stockings. Now y'all looking at me like y'all don't want to have stockings. You got to put your stockings on. It ain't that hot outside yet. All right? Why? She going to tell y'all you can't wear no big hoops. We going old school, right? No big hoops. You already heard it. It's going to be so good that day. I got something for y'all that day. All right? Old school Sunday going to be a good, good time. And bring everybody with you. We're going, taking it back because guess what? You can't be where you are if you forget where you come from, and you can't wear, get where you're going if you forget where you come from. And so we're going back. Listen, that day we're also going to have uh, lunch, dinner after church. So we want everybody to plan to stay. All right, we only turned 75 once. So here's what do my heart glad that we just go ahead and plan to eat today. And you already know we're going to have old school fried and baked chicken. Okay? So don't ask for no filet mignon. And y'all know I'm pescatarian. I ain't asking for no fish or nothing. You gonna make do with this chicken, and the mother gonna slap that on that plate until you get on about your business. Ain't that all right? Ain't that old school? We going all the way. What we got there? They, I ain't telling you everything they got. They got y'all got it worked out, don't you? We got it. We straight. We got. It's gonna be a whole whole day. All right, so plan to spend that weekend with us. I believe it's 11 to 3 or 4. We'll get all the information to you, but make sure you sign up so you can get on base. Bring everybody, all right? Even if they ain't been to church, just bring them. We ain't going to say nothing to them. Just bring them. All right, they skip, say something to them. We ain't going to say nothing to them. We're going to say good to see you in Jesus' name, all right? We leave this place, but never the presence of the Lord, knowing that God has called us to have might. He's given us the same power to have the might of a widow. Our circumstances... Hers, I was pale in comparison to hers, but she found her way and she gave God all she had. Thank you, everybody who made worship go well today. Hear now the words of the benediction. May the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance round about you. And may God grant you his peace. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne of great and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all those sacrificial folks and those working on being sacrificial. And la di da everybody said amen and amen. Give somebody a hug. Sing us out quiet. Love you in Jesus' name. I'll talk to you Tuesday morning. Take your shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. You both gonna change how I can live my hands. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just wanna praise you. I just wanna praise you. I'm gonna change how I can lift my hands. I 
just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Everything that could go wrong all went wrong at one time. So much pressure fell on me. I thought I was going to lose my mind. But I know you want to see if I could hold I just wanna praise you. 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 I